What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to do a quick teardown on the upcoming Retro Flag GPI case. Now if you're not familiar with this, I just did a video on it. I'll leave a link in the description. Basically what we have here is an awesome Game Boy replica powered by Raspberry Pi Zero. Now you will have to provide your own SD card and Raspberry Pi Zero, but they make this super easy to assemble and I wanted to see what's inside. As for a release date and price, mid-May to late May, and the price on this is gonna be $69.99. Like I said, you have to add your own Pi and SD card, but overall, this is gonna be an awesome seller, and it's gonna sell out quick if they don't make enough. In my initial first look video, I did assemble the cartridge slot here, and this is where your Raspberry Pi Zero is gonna sit. I'm actually using a Raspberry Pi Zero W with a 32 gigabyte card. Before this is released by RetroFlag, I will have a full software tutorial. You will have to install a few scripts on top of RetroPie or Recall Box, but by the time you get yours, you'll already have your Pi set up, ready to put it in, and start playing. One modification video that I'm going to be making is adding a rechargeable lithium polymer battery. As you can see, it uses three AA batteries, and a lot of people were upset about that. Personally, I don't mind. I use rechargeable batteries here at my house, so I got plenty of them laying around. But it would be nice to have a 2000 milliamp hour battery in here that we could just recharge on the fly. On my channel, I've done a lot of reviews on pre-assembled and kit-based Raspberry Pi powered Game Boys. Some of them were super dirty, and there was actually one, I'm not going to name any names, that I actually sent back. I didn't even do a review on it because as soon as I opened it up, there was hot glue everywhere inside of it. Some kits are super clean, like Kite Circuit Sword, the Gabozi Pi, and the Free Play Zero. Those are really nice kits to get a hold of if you want to put something together yourself. But if you're looking at pre-assembled ready-to-go kits like from Amazon, Etsy, or eBay, you gotta be really careful because a lot of them just put them together with hot glue and really shoddy solder joints. But as you can see here, the RetroFlag GPI case is put together very professionally. These are made in a factory. They're gonna make a lot of them and hopefully they don't sell out of the first batch too quick because I know a lot of people are gonna wanna get a hold of these. There are two PCBs inside of the case itself, minus the one in the cartridge. There's absolutely no hot glue in here. Everything fits together perfectly, and we can do some modifications to this thing. Now, in my initial video, a lot of people were asking where were the rear buttons? There are rear buttons on this. They have an L and R. I mentioned it and showed it off in that video. So we have four action buttons on the front, start, select, D-pad, and L and R on the back. The GPI case isn't something that the average person can replicate easily. I mean, if you go to a PCB manufacturer, you're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars getting something like this prototype, and they've put a lot of money and thought into this. I think the price tag of $69.99 is pretty awesome. This has a 2.8 inch IPS display with a resolution of 320 by 240, which is perfect for these retro games. And if you ever ran into the issue where you needed to replace this screen, you could do it very easily. Another modification I know we're going to see down the road is adding a bigger screen, like a 3.5 inch screen. You're going to have to modify the front half of the case, but it could be done. So overall, the GPI case was very well planned out and perfectly executed. This is one of the best, if not the best, Raspberry Pi Zero powered Game Boys that I've ever messed around with. The buttons feel authentic because they're using the membrane style that came in the original Game Boys and the SNES or NES controllers. So you don't have any clicky switches on this thing except for the back. L and R are a little clicky, but they're still very usable. I've been planning out my battery modification video, and I do have some 18650 cells here. Unfortunately, we're just not going to have enough room in here, but we can use lithium polymer cells. I have a 1000 milliamp hour 3.7 volt battery here, and I've also measured the inner diameter of the battery compartment. I've ordered one from Amazon. I have to make sure that it fits, but it's a 3000 milliamp hour battery. We should be able to get some really good runtime out of a 3000 milliamp hour battery. In my initial testing, three AA batteries lasted me three and a half hours. Now I'm doing another test with a fresh set just to make sure, but I expect the battery life to be around three to four hours with some high quality AA alkaline batteries in this thing. So it's gonna be well worth the $70 price tag. I will be posting links in this video and my last video as soon as it's available. I'm also gonna post it on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So you guys better be ready when this thing releases cause it's gonna sell out fast. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you wanna see this thing in action, check out my initial video I'll leave a link in the description and on screen now it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button maybe subscribe to the channel but like always thanks for watching